Hey, it's Alejandro Duarte from Vadin and in this video I'm going to show you how to implement integration tests using Vadin Testbench. So for that I'm going to use this very simple application I have here. I developed this application in a previous video and then we added some unit tests on, on it. Check the description of this video if you want to learn about that. So what we want to do right now is to make sure that when I select a date and click calculate age it adds one uh, paragraph here but also I want to test that if it's null if I if I don't select any date and I click the button it should show a notification now the app is not even running or anything but we are going to uh, implement uh, um, integration test that will give us all the confidence on that the app works as expected even without having to run it ourselves and to click the button uh, ourselves so um, for that I'm going to create a new class here main view integration test right now I have other tests here uh, these are unit tests they test only very specific parts of the code this is going to test all the app or you need all the app running in order to to test how to run these tests these are integration tests so let's have a look at the main view class so it has date picker a button and then a click listener that calls this method and depending on where it's null, it shows an error, which is a notification, or it shows the age using a service, which is a paragraph. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Good. So back to the uh, integration test implementation. Now, when you create a project using these, um, uh, the uh, button.com slash start, for example, uh, page. You will get this generated for you as abstract view test which uh, has a lot of uh, functionality uh, that's very useful for this so i'm going to extend that one and now you're going to code tests here and you you do it kind of similarly to how you uh, implement um, unit tests it's not unit testing it's, it's integration testing right you add some test here and what's going to happen is that when you run these tests the application is deployed and or is started and a browser is going to be uh, opened and the this view is going to be where is it here uh, this view is going to be um, kind of requested, right? So first thing that you might wonder is how do uh, how do we know which route is going to be opened or requested? So if you have a look at this class, you'll see that the default constructor it has uh, an empty route right this is this one but what if we change this or if we want to try a different one well we need to uh, call this constructor now something I like to do is to kind of add a new constructor here that takes a string route and it passes here so that way we can um, in the integration test we can add a constructor on uh, this and then call um, that now this we can extract to a variable here and main view the route and use it here so if I decide to change this to age view or whatever 
the unit test is not going to necessarily break. Oh, sorry, the integration test. Okay. So, again, when we run this test, it's going to open this view. Now we know why it's going to open that view. And then it's going to go ahead and run whatever we have here. We can have several of these. So, let's, let's start by thinking about what we can test. We can test that. Actually, let's go here. Because we don't really need this code anymore. Uh, we might want to test that when I click on at the button and there is a null date here, we show a notification. So, should show notification on null date. So, with valid test bench, which is what we are going to use now, you kind of select things here. You find this date picker and you do whatever you want with it. You find this button and you probably click it and then you try to find if this appeared or if a notification appeared or whatever. And so for that we have this method. It's called like this. So kind of similar to jQuery. It's really a method. We can go to the implementation of that method. Here it is. And so here you select uh, something. So let's select this to clear, make sure that we clear the value. So that's a date picker. Date picker, but it's not. Uh, you, you don't use the uh, exact class. You use something else, which is date picker element from this package test bench. So for every single component, you'll find something with that ends in element. So for example, date picker element or button element or whatever, right? And then we say, okay, uh, I know there is only one. So I can call here first. Now, if there were many, you have other options. You can, for example, select all of them or uh, you can get them by ID and the way it works is so that for example this date picker you can set an ID and say like age sorry uh, birth date or whatever and then you can use this um, over here this ID right let's not do that let's just pick the first that is the date picker now for that we want to set the value um set date no which is the same as clear so when we, when you run this integration test you'll see that you see this window and then it's going to clear the value here good what's next we need to click this button but first we need the button so again we can select the button like button element remember that dot class again I know there is only one so I'm going to call first this is the button and guess what button uh, click there you go so if you run this as is you will see this gets cleared well not this it's going to open a new window and then it's going to click the the button but we want to see whether these uh, interactions lead to a notification so we need to select a notification notification element dot class and we're going to do first because maybe it's not there yet so we need to wait for the first one to appear use the notification 
and we might want to see if the notification is open it's open good and we're using the unit here so we can assert that is open which is the actual value core matures is true let's use static imports here and here also so sorry that this open is true and uh, that should be it cool now the way you run this is different from uh, unit tests because this is not a unit test you need the whole application running in order, in, in order to click stuff right so if you go to the maven view here you'll see that well you see other projects i have here but uh, this is the one we're interested in but you'll see that there is an integration test profile so you need to activate that the way you do that in the command line is uh, uh, p integration tests okay and then you run not test because it's for unit tests you need to verify this is for integration tests so it's like this verify but i'm going to do it from here so if i double click this um this might not work but i want to show you this i'm actually not sure i think it's not going to work let's see oh uh, but but this is how you run integration tests okay with the verify uh life cycle and the integration tests profile so let's see if this works so right now it's i think starting the application that's good so in a real life application you will have to start other services as well or you you will have to have some kind of for example a database running somewhere so that your uh, integration tests can use it you could for example use a uh, in-memory database or something like that so yeah it failed but the message is very clear if you go to the end here it says like doesn't exist drivers that xml doesn't exist and uh, i think that's a problem with the starter right now that you when, when you create a new project but that's very easy to to fix if you just google that um and you go to the flow project here you'll find a, an example of this missing file so i'm gonna fix that right now where is my project here you file was it drivers i think drivers that xml i guess that's the one i paste that and this has like the uh, definition of the the drivers for starting the the browser so google chrome on windows linux and os x right anyway so now let's try to run this again verify life cycle and this time we should uh, see that the probably that the driver is downloaded at some point and also we will see the browser and uh, some clicks and stuff that could happen very fast so let's see not starting the application there we go now we are running the uh test bench uh integration tests so that's the browser it's controlling the app and i think it's it's done uh build success you'll find somewhere here that uh 
there are no failures or errors or anything. So what happens if uh, if it if this uh, doesn't work? So let's try to do that. Mm, uh, okay, so let's comment this out, for example. And so let's run the. Um, sorry, not this way. Uh, yep, that way. Verify. So let's see what happens when an integration test uh, fails. I'm recording this in a very old computer. I don't have my regular computer with me right now. Uh, I think that's the reason it's taking so much time but I'm not sure, it could be something else. Anyway. All right, so here we go. So it's probably waiting for the notification to appear, but it's not gonna happen. There should be some time, uh, timeout and it failed, so you get this report over here build failure and it tells you uh, which one failed so main view integration test should show notification on null date failed right there and from was a timeout right so so you can go ahead and, and fix it the other cool thing is that you will see a screenshot of the uh, state of the of the application, so you'll see that there is no date here and no notification, nothing. So you can check that and try to solve the problem. So just for the sake of completeness, let's let's. Uh, implement another test and seems I'm feeling a bit lazy let's copy paste that should show or not show but should add a para paragraph on non null date right so let's go ahead with that so we have the date picker now we set a value or a date local date now we have the button we click it now we didn't need the notification what we need is first because it's add paragraph so maybe there are some other paragraphs there before with the click right so we need to kind of count uh, the number of paragraphs that there are in the uh, in the view so let's select paragraph element that class then all of them size so this is uh, like the uh, initial count let's say yeah now we click the button and we need to or you know what what we can do is expected count it's going to be whatever it was before which is this plus one and then we do uh kind of the same but this is going to be the actual count right and we assert that the actual count is what we expect. That's it. So with this, uh, we kind of we know that both paths, let's say, of behavior are working. If I click this and it's not null, it shows the 
um, the um, paragraph or adds the paragraph and, or, and if it's not, shows the notification. So let's uh, try to, to run this integration test. There we go. We are now running the tests. And it seems to be working, right? Build success. We can confirm that we run two tasks, no failures, errors, or skipped. This is, I believe, because I have this is not a, uh, an error, it's some warning because of the Java version I'm using, probably. I'm not sure. Anyway. Um, so that's what I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, so this is how you use uh, Vadin Test Bench to automate uh, this kind of uh, using the app, clicking stuff and verifying that the outcome is what you want. Uh, so definitely uh, try this out if you want uh, to increase the quality in your software. So I hope you learned something new in this video and I'll see you in the next one.